Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we've come to Lan Hydrock House. So we've come here to Bodmin Parkway. We can get a train here and we're going to walk to Lan Hydrock House. Let's go and see it, it's wonderful. One and three quarter miles to Lan Hydrock House. Decent walk, isn't it? Yeah. Just come under the main line. Cool, huh? And as you come out into the woodland, you can hear the gurgle of water, can't you? So that must be the River Foy. So, hi Laurie, we said we'd come back and we are going to find that kitchen. It's like something out of Harry Potter, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a lovely 20 minute walk and we're nearly at Restbrim Bridge car park. From there we'll follow the main drive up to the house. What have you found now? It's really interesting. they got a photograph here from a 17th century taken by a drone. Okay, so we've got my great granddad's History of Cornwall. This is quite an old book. It was written in 1880. So it says Lan Hydrock, mm. population 194, and then it goes on to say there is a very curious ancient ceiling here in a long gallery entitled The Creation, and the house itself is perhaps one of the best specimens of the Tudor style in the country. The story of Lan Hydrock includes a devastating fire. Around one o'clock in the afternoon of the 4th of April 1881, a kitchen chimney caught light. Fanned by a strong gale, the fire gutted the whole of the house apart from the north wing. So then they had to rebuild it and they employed an architect called Code. Mm. And he was tasked with installing all the latest mod cons. So the kitchen had a, a spit, a special spit made. It looks like a college hall. It looks like something out of Harry Potter. And they put on a new wing for the servants' quarters. All of the kitchen, like this dairy, and we'll go and see it all. It's fantastic. Do have satellite TV? All right, enough of us wittering on. Let's go and find this house. So this is the gatehouse. It survived the fire. And it's the original part of the estate. Andrew. Look gorgeous. <laughs> it's a bit of fun wearing that. Yes, quite. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this mosaic floor. Oh wow. The dining room, it's all laid out for dinner. Of course, Victorian dining was very formal and you had to sit through many courses, more of a chore than an enjoyment. There would have been lots of courses there then. And even the plaster work in here is exquisite. Fireplace, all wood panelled, bespoke wood panelling, eh? And of course they had to keep the food hot, so it's all prepared in here in the servery. A warming cabinet provided a solution. This cabinet is heated with pipe steam generated in the cellars. Oh, very clever. Look, crumb sweeper. We have those at school to sweep all the crumbs off the table. To the kitchen. Turn right to the kitchen. Starving. Oh, this is much more functional. Look, painted walls. No wood panelling. No carpet. Quarry tiles. For housemaid ring once, still room and dairy maid twice, kitchen maid three times. Where are we going? Down there. Oh, it's the hatch, look, serving hatch. Oh, I can't wait to go in there. Chimney, you've got a corner smoke jack, 
which is a massive fan, mm -hmm. it sits in the chimney. That way up. This bars and you light a fire. So the fan needs to turn that and drive all these chains that would turn all these spits and the gravy would collect in the pans. Marble top table, that's got to be for making pastry, hasn't it? I think the kitchen is a great laboratory of the household. Look at these jelly moulds. Have you seen them? Covered in copper pans. Isn't that incredible? Well, that's a crockery rack, isn't it? Now we're going into the bakery, look. Bakery? You like making a bit of bread, oh. don't you? Cottage loaves on the table. Oh wow, look, 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 look. This is a dough trough. You'd get several loaves out of that, wouldn't you? So it took four days to get up to temperature? Yeah. Wow. Fancy making some pizzas in there then? Yeah. <laughs> This is the pastry room. Cool marble makes an ideal surface for pastry rolling. So what's in the cupboards then? All dry ingredients? Rice, yeah. Raisins. Yes. Oatmeal. Got dried out peas, beans, all sorts of pulses. <laughs> this jar belongs to Red Reef Brewery. <laughs> what's it do near there? Okay, so they've called it the meat larder. Look what's hanging from the roof. Oh, what's behind me? I don't know if I want to look. Bit of meat. <laughs> On the wall. <laughs> oh yeah. All sorts of game birds. Oh, little bunnies. Let's go find the dairy. Milk was delivered to this busy room twice a day from Homer Farm for the vast quantities of butter and cream made here. Pans of cream were heated by steam from the scalding range and skimmed off to make clotted cream. That's amazing, isn't it? The plasterwork above that light. Wow. The loo. Do you know why it's called a loo? Why? Well, if you went into a posh hotel in New York mm -hmm. and you asked for room 100, you're asking if you could go to the loo. Alright. 100? Loo? Yes. Now, now, young man, behave yourself, else you won't be having any supper. Oh, I'm going to learn some history. Might be here for quite some time. I think we could be. <laughs> Servants' quarters. That's where you and me would be. Speak for yourself. And suddenly you come through a door, lovely rich carpet underneath you, wood panelling, tall ceilings, plaster work. You just know you're back in the posh part of the house. Now, uh, a bit different to the footman's room. His lordship liked to wash in the saucer bath, 
Where's the cup that fits in that then? <laughs> What's in here? Oh my goodness me, look at that. Wow. You know it's a big bath when you've got to have a step to get into it, haven't you? A real spider. <laughs> Her ladyship's room. The spider is plastic. Ah! Oh. <laughs> So that's a safe for a jewellery, is it? <laughs> Incredible. A boudoir was a lady's private sitting room. <laughs> Madeline Hydrock, is it cream or jam first? So this part of the house was not burned in the fire. It's the original Elizabethan part. Oh, my goodness me. Let's go into the long gallery then. The gallery is 35 metres long and features one of the most ornate plasterwork ceilings in England. We have no records of the tradesman who did the work or indeed when it was done. However, based on the style, we think it dates to the 1640s. The cartouches depicting scenes from the Book of Genesis would have been used by the deeply religious family to teach the young children Bible stories. It could do with a lick of paint, couldn't it? There's actually no evidence to suggest that the ceiling was ever painted, only ever lime washed. The natural discoloration is due to the acid in the plaster mix itself. A hose cart. So this was used to bring the hoses up to the house in the event of a fire. Oh, I know what this one is. This was the one that would rock from side to side and pump water. It's the most beautiful parterre garden, little box hedges and begonias, providing stunning splash of colour. So our trip inside the house today at Lan Hydrock. We walked from Bodmin Parkway railway station, one and three quarter miles walk up the driveway. Oh, it's a really easy walk, so it's really nice. It just rounds off a nice day, doesn't it? Yeah, Having a nice brilliant. Walk. Yeah. yeah, and I love visiting Lan Hydrock. It's one of my favourite places, a jewel in the National Trust crown in Cornwall. Yeah, it's an amazing place to visit. If you're in this area, really check it out. It's fantastic. Yeah, we haven't shown you everything. We didn't go in the church. There was a service on and everything. So you will have a wonderful day here.